Our next speaker is V. Mendel, who will talk to us about uh, avocado wilt in Israel. Thank you, Bob. First of all, I would like to, take the te to thank many people around here in the States and in Sri Lanka and Israel for sharing with us their knowledge, their experience, their thought about the situation with the shoot all bore. I'm going to concentrate in this presentation on some aspect of the biology and behavior of the beetle. And I was lucky to have two other presentations where I will tell you something about uh, the chemical control of the beetle and the situation in Israel. Well, this is a volcanic center. And uh, from here, Stanley and I start to work on the beetle and the fungus. So first of all, I would like to uh, show you the list of hosts that uh, managed to be attacked by the beetle. And I'm separating between what we called a suitable host, four species, and I listed them according to their susceptibility to the, to the beetle and the fungus. We don't separate between them for the moment. And a short list of other trees which are intercepted by the beetle, but we don't see any development and about the recovery of the fungus, Stanley will tell you a bit later. But what I can say that we can easily distinguish between different type of a non-host. Some of them are highly attractive for the beetle, others are not really attractive and I would suppose that they were intercepted by the beetles simply because they are growing in adjacent, very close to uh, infested trees. Well, this is the uh, elder box in our, one of our net house where we uh, do some of our experiments. And if you look at this uh, penetration spot, you see the typical development of the fungus only on the xylem and the cortex is relatively healthy. Actually, it's healthy. You don't see any sign on the cortex. This is what happened later on. The tree responds and you see the, the pitch out of the gum, which is typical to elder box. Here you see the, uh, the xylem of infested and healthy uh, elder box, and you easily can see the spread of the fungus inside, whereas the cortex uh, remains uh, rather clean. Uh, elder box is extremely sensitive, and uh, whenever it infest, it inf it's infested by the beetle, the tree dies uh, very soon. Here you see one of the specimens in Tel Aviv. Actually, all elder box in Tel Aviv were killed by the beetle. Not, there are not very many of them, but the beetle uh, managed to find each one of them. <laughs> See again another view of the of the and not el this elder box. You see that the low part of the tree is still alive, and somehow it seems they, they first of all they attack the the upper part of the tree, and then they move to the low part of the tree. Another important host is this is the custard bean plants. Here you see one of the the small trees which are infested. It's easily to distinguish between healthy and infested trees by looking at the upper part of the canopy. You see dry branches. This is a very good symptom. And then look down and you see those penetration spots, usually in the thick part of the stem. You don't see any secretion. Nothing comes out like a gum or anything. It seems that uh, the tree it doesn't respond to the penetration of the beetles. And then again, you cut the tree, you look at the xylem, and then you see the same picture, infested xylem, and compare with a healthy one. Here easily you can see the penetration spots of uh, the beetle. Another thing which is very interesting is the 
the black stuff that covers the walls of the gallery. You can see that in every infested host. We don't know exactly what it is, but it's very, uh, quite typical. Here you see again a closer look of the galleries in uh, Custard Bean. And again, you see this white, uh, black stuff that covers the, the wall of the gallery. A closer look, you see the eggs, which are very many, by the way, in Custard Bean uh, plants. Again, this is another gallery in the Custard Bean, and you see this, uh, the gallery is long, and you see bunches of eggs, which are very typical, and the larvae. You can see the fungus, and again, there's black stuff that covered the, the walls of the, the galleries. Again, another picture of the custard being infested by the beetle. Another host is an uh, English oak. There are several species of English oaks. This particular species seems to be, at least in Israel, uh, extremely sensitive. And on many occasions, we found that these oaks are dying because of the attack. Closer look, you see the cankers all over the, the branches. And closer look, you see that the beetle also colonized the twigs, or not exactly the twigs, the small diameter branches and medium diameter branches. And in this case, the typical uh, symptom is wetting, some kind of wetting on the, on the bark. And again, a closer look on the infested branch. And when you look inside, you see the spread of the fungus uh, along the xylem. Again, typical uh, conkers that are, you can see in other cases, like in the black walnut, for example, you may see a similar situation of small conkers on the, on the xylem. Again, this is one of the non-suitable host, brachycheton species. Again, the, you see again the pitch out of the, of the gum here. You see that all over the tree. The trees are infested whenever there are suitable hosts around. All these trees uh, grow in adjacent to uh, other susceptible hosts, usually elder box. In some cases, uh, uh, sorry, in some, okay, again, in some cases, the tree dies. We don't know why. Uh, I'm not very sure now that this death is directly related to the infestation by the fungus because we don't see any beetle coming in or develop in brachycheton. Okay, like a tree like this, a street tree, which uh, deteriorates very quickly after the attack by the beetle, but we don't see any beetle inside the tree. Oh, sorry. Okay. Now we uh, turn to the avocado, and you see the very clear symptoms of persitol exudation on the bark, which we already uh, saw yesterday. And again, in heavily infested uh, plantation, this is what you expect to see. A lot of conkers, which black at the center, the white sugary exudation around this black spot. Very typical, very unpleasant. And again, usually you see the first infestations inside the canopy. This is a bit uh, older one. This is a bit younger infestation. And first of all, you see this sugar eruption, as you call it. And later on, it's vanish and you see this typical uh, canker. Uh, sometimes the cankers vanish or start to decay, like you see here. In most of the cases, the canker begin, grows as long as the beetle, the beetle are still inside. So this is a big canker, and it's continued to spread until, until a certain point. Again, and the people tend to recolonize a, a section of a branch or a stem where it was already occupied by the beetles. It's certainly uh, not a colonization by the brood, because it's the brood didn't emerge yet, 
but other, be other beetles join those uh, infested uh, sections. Here, for example, you can see one of our observations when we compare the situation after 20 days. So we look at the situation of certain branches that we marked uh, in particular date, and then we came back after 20 days and we count the number of uh, penetration spots, and you can see a very clear correlation between uh, level of infestation and additional penetration spot later on. However, this is not always the picture, because if you look at this situation, and uh, you still see some correlation between the level of infestation and additional uh, infested, uh, infestation spot, but it's, the correlation is not very good. And there are some cases that you don't see any correlation at all, like in this particular Haas pl young plantation. And again, we measure the relationship between uh, what happened before and what is the situation later on, and we don't see any correlation. So there are different situations. We don't really understand what really what makes the difference between the different situations, but we still study that. And uh, later on, of course, you see something like this, and then you see different kind of response of the, the tree. In some cases, you can hardly see any exudation of the persitol on the trunk. In extreme cases, other extreme cases, you see a lot of them. It seems to me that this is somehow uh, related related to the, the condition of the tree. This is a, a poor tree, and this is a better tree with more, more vitality, and that's why the tree responds, responds uh, like that. Again, so we cut the tree just to show you what is inside, and uh, this is what you can see. This is the the upper part, the, the outer part of the bark, and you see inside, you see the spread on the fungus, and again, you see that the, the cortex is uh, actually clean. And then the tree is alive, by the way. Well, inside the xylem, that's what you would see, would you expect, the beetles in their galleries, and you can count the eggs if you wish, if you're lucky enough to cut it in the right section. And sometimes you can see the old stages inside, inside one uh, a piece of branch. You can see, the, you can see here, you can see the, the adults, and the callow adults, and the pupa, and the, even eggs. Well, this is the typical position of a larva. Again, you see this black stuff that covered the wall of the gallery. This is the I would say the late stage of the third instar uh, lava. And here, what you can see is a cut in a, in a branch again, and you can see the galleries. This is just before the emergence of the adults. It's not a very good uh, picture, photo, but uh, again, you can see a lot of adults around here. You can see the galleries, and again, you can see this black stuff that covers the wall of the galleries. This is emergence, and only in these cases you may see some frost coming out from the branch or from the stem. Again, uh, we cut the branch, and then you can see here inside the typical gallery and the typical, typical infestation uh, of the xylem. And again, uh, you see this is a branch that break, probably because of the weakness of this point, due to the galleries inside. Of course, we can easily uh, rare the lava on the petri dishes on the uh, PDA that we receive from Stanley, and you can see the, very vividly the, the lava feeding on the fungus. And they, they like it very much, by the way. And uh, later on, they get into the cortex and constructed the gallery inside the petri dish. And you can see the galleries uh, inside a, a petri dish, and you can see the, the male and the female inside the, those galleries, and even the eggs. And then 
they manage to, not very many of them, but they manage to complete this cycle in a Petri dish. Here you see a callow adult. Actually, uh, we found out that they don't tend to lay too many eggs in those uh, Petri dishes. So when we add sawdust of uh, avocado, we had managed to increase the number of eggs that were laid in the system. It's still not very satisf satisfactory uh, because uh, the production is not very good. But uh, again, if you add the wood material into the system, you improve it. So we, this, this system also allow us to, to do some measures and to follow the development of uh, the beetle inside those petri dishes. So here we compare uh, the development of beetles that were taken for two different sources. Beetles that were grew on the in petri dish on the fusario on the petri dishes and beetle that we uh, extracted from uh, avocado branches. And what you can see here is that uh, you don't see much differences between the development stages that, uh, that actually their parents were adults of the, those two sources. However, uh, if you look at this, the, uh, the time from introduction to the position was, was much longer if the beetle were, if the adult beetle were collected from the petri dishes. And that's, of course, influenced the, the entire uh, development from introduction until the inclusion, until they became adults. By the way, we did, as a control, uh, inoculation or in colonization of uh, disconnected branches of avocado that we keep in the water. And you see that, that the development of those beetles. Of course, we, we, couldn't, uh, we couldn't measure the development of the immature stages, but you can see that the development of the beetle in those branches and in the petri dishes was more or less uh, the same. Uh, of course, we tried uh, different the methods to monitor the beetles. Uh, eventually, we found that it is a waste of time for the moment because uh, the, it's very easy to spot or uh, to detect those uh, infestation spots because of the exudation of the persitol. But anyway, we tried manuka oil, oils, of course. And uh, you can see here, this is a photo of a plate with the beetles on those sticky panels that we hang in the uh, avocado plantations. And we also, we compared the, of course, sticky, sticky trap with the bait, without the bait, and different colors. Here you see the results, the differences between uh, you know, red plates and white plates. And eventually, of course, the manuka oil affect the attraction, of course, and we get more beetle with the bait. And it seems that the red plate are somehow better than the white ones, but uh, since it's it's difficult to, to, to count the beetles on the red plate. We prefer to work with the uh, white ones. But again, it's not very promising uh, methods. And, and I would like to finish my presentation with uh, some information about the seasonal history of the, the beetle. And what we did here is we studied the state structure of the beetles inside uh, the branches of avocado and custard bean plants in different uh, times last year and this year. And you can see uh, quite clear that the, in most of the time you see adults in the galleries, but that gives us some information about the dynamic of the beetles and the number of generation. We compared that with information we and managed to generate by uh, suspension of uh, those uh, sticky plates. And uh, we know by now that we have about three main peak flights during the year, which more or less correspond to the, the state structure uh, of the beetle. And that's all.
Thank you. So, hi, Zui. Um, thank you very much for this presentation. Um, I have two questions for you. The one of them is, on the, on the, the Brahiton tree on the street, you mentioned that uh, that's not a suitable host for the beetle because you didn't see the beetle. Uh, but tree is still dying. So have you isolated fungus out of that? And no, plant? not at all. We, we were overwhelmed by the different tasks we <laughs> needed, needed to do, so we couldn't pay much attention to that. Okay. You couldn't look at it. Okay. The, the second one is, so uh, in Israel, you have this uh, problem in your commercial avocado grows. So can you tell us a little bit, what is the economic <coughs> uh, impact of this past uh, disease on commercial avocados? Well, I, I, I will refer to that tomorrow, but uh, we don't have good figure good figures by now, but uh, the situation is, is bad. Zvi, <laughs> you showed really good correlation between previous attack and current attack. Um, and in, in some of those relationships, there was not, no relationship. But I noticed that in at least a couple of those graphs, there were different cultivars. Was there a cultivar relationship where in Haas, you didn't have a relationship in Edinger or another cultivar, there was that relationship? Is there a genetic component there? Uh, yes, I will refer to that tomorrow as well because, I, because of the limit of time, I didn't address the issue of dif difference between, the s different susceptibility between different avocado cultivars. But some of the cultivars seems to be not very susceptible. Although eventually after repeated attack, they will become infested as well. Hus, for example, is extremely susceptible. Ettinger is almost not susceptible. One more. Two quick questions, Tui. Excellent talk. Uh, I have one question for you and one question Where? for the mycologist in the audience. Okay, right here, Jerry, okay. Back. Sorry. Um, what, the question for you is, have you tried ethanol lures rather than manuka oil? Because yes. we know that manuka oil is good for the it's a fairly specific red bay beetle, but I'm not sure if... That's the first thing we tried, actually. And, uh, well, I must... Uh, I have, to, I have to, to mention this was an advice that we received from Bob, <laughs> to use ethanol. <laughs> and we also added alpha pinen as well, with no luck. Interesting. Uh, and another question, uh, based on those beautiful images you showed of, of the galleries, we all know that the galleries are black. We also all know that the fungi in the media are kind of whitish, pinkish. Does any of the entomologists, uh, I'm sorry, mycologists in the audience know what is the black stuff that's in all those galleries? Well, we really, actually, we, we can guess, but we don't know. No, it's not the fungus. I, I believe it's not the fungus, but again, I don't know. Thank you.